What is going on YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Today, we're going to be talking about the Season of Hope 10.3. We're going to be going, going through the uh, the notes of some of the big healing changes mostly and just talking about if they were kind of good overall or bad overall. In my opinion, just as a quick overview, I think this patch was really detrimental. And I think this combined with how the map plays currently has not been too fun of a season. And the other thing that's contrib contribu to contributing to it is the, the aura support builds. They're really boring. So I'm going to vent a little bit of venting, a little bit of talking about the patch. Let me know what you guys think about the, the patch. Did you guys like it overall? Did you guys like the reworks to hell, to afro, to the healing trees? Let me know what you guys think, but let's just jump right in. So starting with the trees, we'll just talk about the, the big three items for each of the, uh, the trees. Rod of Asclepius. I think this is one of the few items that I liked coming out of the uh, of the patch. It, it is good stats. It's a little expensive, but it's giving you ally CDR. It's giving you increased healing, health, mana, power. Overall, a really good item. I like Rod of Asclepius. I think this is a really good change that they made. Old Rod of Asclaps was terrible. It was never buildable. This rod is actually pretty decent, and it is buildable. Rejuvenating Heart. Probably the worst item added in the patch. Maybe. Maybe Sekhmet's has a case for, for worst item. 2450 gold, 70 power. So for some reason, it's a lower magical power than Rod of Asclepius. It's more health, more mana. And then the passive is successfully hitting enemy gods with basic attacks and abilities provides a stack of 6% healing, healing dealt that is consumed by the next ability used. The problem with this item is there's not a single god in all of Smite game that you try to just have one big heal to like just full heal your allies. That's not a thing. If this was maybe something where it's like an in combat thing where like you get stacks, you're going to get like one stack every second. If you're in combat for eight seconds, you get like more healing than you would for than Rod of Claps. And maybe it's got a spot. But this is only on the next ability used. used. So you're getting 48% increased healing dealt, which is sick. But say you're healing for 200, that increased healing is only going to make it a 300 heal ability, and then it's going to go back down to about 200, when this one is going to be 260, 260, 260, 260, 260, constantly. The stats fall flat. The passive is bad. Cool name. Cool, cool, cool color. Cool picture. I like that, but everything else is pretty bad. Last gasp. This one I also thought was really, really bad, but I do think it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. The biggest thing to talk about is the passive. Is after healing an ally with an ability, you gain 10 magical power per 10% of their mixing, mixing health. You're reliant on your teammate being low so you can heal them for you to get more power. The stats are actually pretty good. 2,400 gold, very cheap. 100 magical power, a lot of power. Good health, mana, and good magic pen. Like, all that, very, very good. Really, really sick. You could buy the item just for these six things, five things, whatever that is. And it's sometimes it's even worth. This, on the other hand, I think it's just too 50-50. It's not something you can kind of control. I mean, your ally could, like, walk into a tower, and then you can heal them to make it good. But there's a reason this item is really only getting built on raw, and it's mostly for this stuff. But it's not really for the passive. The passive is just, like, kind of like a cherry on top a lot of the time. But it's, it's, it's okay. It can be buildable, and I like the idea behind it. Looking at the physical tree, Cat shield. It's a good item. It's a good item. I think its problem lies in the fact that it's giving a bunch of stats, a bunch of stats that are not great, and it's kind of expensive. So 2,400 gold for a physical item, a physical power item, 2,400 gold is kind of a lot. Because who's going to be building this? Warriors. Hunters are not building this. Assassins aren't building this. Warriors are. Compare it to what you could build instead. Really just gods like Guan and Horus build this item and, and like it a lot. A lot of the other times, even if a god is somewhat of a healer, like I don't know. I, I can't think of anything. Uh, if a god is still a healer somewhat, there's just better items to be building. Uh, regrowth, glads, even the new phalanx is another item you could be building. There's a bunch of items that you're probably opting into over cat shield. 30 power, 250 health, 20 MP5, 10 CDR, and kill increasing healing by 30%, and all allied gods within 70 units have 10 CCR and 4% movement speed. Pretty good. It's pretty good. I think it's probably the second best item that they added right under Asclepius. They could be pretty interchangeable though, IMO. Vital Amplifier. Another cool item. 2450 gold, uh, 40 power, 200 health, 15 MP5, and 20% attack speed. After healing yourself or an allied god with an ability, you gain 10% attack speed and 5% basic attack damage for 6 seconds, stacking 3 times. I think the worst part about this is the stacking 3 times. This means you kind of have to be a god that just constantly heals or just has a tick heal. The only god that comes to mind that really uses this well is Arachne. But trying to find this into a build, it's weird. It's difficult. Arachne, you could go like Golden Blade, Vital Amplifier, but then you're delaying your kins. You could go Vital Amplifier like 4th or 5th, and then you don't really have like a Magi's or some survivability. So I think it's just fine, but a lot of the times you're just getting outdone by other items, and I think that's what Vital Amplifier's kind of downfall. And then the worst item I think added, Sekhmet's. 2,500 gold, 45 power, 
200 health, 15 MP5, 10% CDR. Decent stats, and then probably one of the worst passives that I've ever seen. After healing yourself or an allied god with an ability, for the next 6 seconds each time you damage an enemy god, your non-ultimate ability cooldowns are reduced by 5 0.5 seconds. This reduction can only occur once per second, and the effect may only occur once every 3 or 12 seconds. This is kind of the biggest thing. This reduction can only occur once per second. At best, if you min-max to the absolute maximum, you can get three seconds off of your base abilities after healing. And that means they all have to be on cooldown before you use your heal. And if they strafe away from you and you can't hit them that entire time, then you're getting even less than three seconds. It's also the most expensive for some reason. And yeah, overall, Sekhmet's very, very little viability. You suck! I don't know. Maybe they can move the reduction down to 0.5 instead. So it's not like abusable to just have like perma abilities up by somebody that's just spamming auto attacks. I don't know, like Kali, Bach or something like that. But in this current iteration, I don't think this item is ever going to be getting built. I think these items, I understand what they were trying to address, but I think a lot of them didn't really hit the mark other than the base two, which is Cat and Asclepius, where it's just additional healing with some good stats. Last thing I want to touch on in this patch for items is Erosion. I think this item was great. This item is a good addition. 30 protections, 350 health. And then every time an ally or an enemy uses a shield within 30 units, you gain movement speed. And then you're also reducing their shields by 30%. I think this is a really, really good item to add. Like 10 out of 10 high res, banger erosion. Next up, talk about Aphrodite and hell. I do not like how Aphrodite and hell play currently. I think they are very boring for the game as tank healers. I think them as utility healers with focus on their utility and healing more than their survivability would have been cool but the problem is they have a ton of healing they have a ton of uh, they have mediocre damage i'll say mostly hell has mediocre damage afro's damage isn't really that great a lot of utility a lot of healing and then they also have a ton of tankiness and survivability all in all these characters give you a lot a lot of value the one thing that they lack in is cc afro has one kiss that stuns and then she has a slow and then hell just has a slow that's all their cc and i think that is not too it's not big enough of a downside landing phase against an aphrodite and a hell is just unwinnable they never run out of mana they never run out of healing any trade that you take where you're not killing them means that they're going to heal it up and then they end up winning so if you trade you get them down to 100 health and you're sitting at 500 health 30 seconds later, they have now healed up to the same spot as you, and now it is a losing fight because in the next 30 seconds, they're going to be back to full health, and you're going to be sitting at zero or zero health, zero mana because you can't spam abilities like they can. Now, to touch on the parts of their kits that I think are the worst with how they currently interact, it is the healing, having base healing at the current level. With anti-heal being capped now at 80%, and they get healing based on their levels instead of on their power, they don't need to be building any sort of power to now heal for 200 for Afro, and in Hell's case, 300 up to 400 with her, her 301. These characters just opt in these full tank builds, and Afro is giving... Protections to her teammates. It's doing damage on her kiss. Lovebirds are doing damage, also reducing cooldown, also healing. Undying love is a proccing jealousy effect to give extra damage to her teammates. All in all, Afro's just doing so much, and she's unkillable, and she's making one of her teammates unkillable, and she's healing. Too much utility in their kits. I think... As they are right now, it would be fine if their utility was not as high as it is. Afro now has damage on Kiss, damage on Lovebirds, damage on Back Off. So she's got damage in her kit. Obviously, it's not great damage. We'll talk about how we get there, but she has good damage. She's also going to be giving MP5 and protections to her allies. Insane. She's going to give it cooldown, ability base, or ability cooldown to her teammates. She's going to be giving extra damage to her teammates. All of this at the same time where she's also giving movement speed. So many things that she makes that this 2v2 that she plays with is just unwinnable. And if you play it into like a Vamana Afro, Vamana, or Afro Hebo, it's a 2v2 that can 2v5, literally 2v5. They can just stomp a stompa or just Hebo knock up water spout, water hands, and just kill you. And it makes the game really, really not fun. Afro, not fun. Looking at hell. The stance attunement, I think, was a good change. Instead of increasing her healing with her, her one, it reduces the enemy's power. Comboing this, though, with... Also making it so that you get per level healing instead of having to build it through power makes it so it's even more annoying. Because instead of, she just has a lot of healing. If we just stop her healing, she's really not going to be doing too much. Now, she's super tanky. She's reducing your damage. She's also increasing her own heat. Or she's not increasing her own healing. She's increasing her teammates' movement speed. She's increasing their attack speed. She's giving them 
cleanses, which is CC immunity. And then she's also giving protections in her ult. Stance switch is now on a one second cooldown instead of two seconds. So she's just perma stance switching back and forth. Her two is removing enemies' protections, making them a lot squishier while making her teammates super tanky. Like all in all, I can complain about this for a very, very long time because I tweeted this and it's so true that I'm going to say it again and I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. That's my shoulder, but this current iteration of Aphrodite in Hell is the most boring, most frustrating, and it's the worst iteration of ha Aphro and Hell in their entire lifetime of Smite. It is not fun to play against. It's very, very not fun to play as, in my opinion, I think old Aphro and old Hell were actually pretty fun to play because you had to build into some sort of power if you played her into support. And if you played her in mid, then you're just not going to be super tanky. Their utility is just way too high. Their healing is still just way too high. And then they can just build into these tank items so that they're just super tanky while also healing. So I don't love that. But now that I've talked about all this, let me know what you guys think about the, the patch, the items, Aphro, Hell. All in all, did you like this patch? Did you not like it? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you guys again next time. Peace.